My name is Jocelyn Ruel Kersker. I'm the Chief of Staff to Mayor Cahill, and it's my honor to be your guide through today's Pride Flag Raising event. Yeah, woo! Applause is, is good. Yeah, thank you. The City of Beverly Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the Beverly Public Schools, and the Human Rights Committee of Beverly welcome everyone to Beverly City Hall for this event today. Thank you to Mayor Cahill, Senator Lovely, Representative Paracella, city leaders, including City Council President Julie Flowers, and the other city councilors and school committee members who are here. I haven't identified all of you, but I will, and I will announce your names before this event is through. Um, the Beverly Police Department and the Beverly Public Schools for their attendance and in some cases their participation today. I would also like to express our deepest gratitude to the LGBTQ leaders on the North Shore for decades worked to shape these celebrations and calls to action. Thank you for the work you did to help get us here today. Yeah. Thank you. The raising of the pride flag is near and dear to my heart because it heralds the start of summer, but more importantly, because it reminds everyone who passes by that we are a community that celebrates and supports diversity. This flag and this event at City Hall make me proud to be a City of Beverly employee and resident. So welcome, thank you. All right, and now I would like to welcome Mayor Michael Cahill to the podium. Thank you, Jocelyn. It's great to see everybody. Just because I've seen a couple of our fellow elected officials, I want to say their names and then Jocelyn, you can try to get the rest. Uh, City Councilor of Ward 4, Scott Hausman is here. Thank you, Councilor. Um, our friend and neighbor from Salem, State Representative Paul Tucker is here. Thank you, Paul. Our City Council from Ward 2, Estelle Rand. Um, Jocelyn already mentioned City Council President Julie Flowers is here. State, State Representative Jerry Paracella. State Senator Joan Lovely. And I, I'm happy if somebody wants to wave and point out any other councilors. Ward 3 City Councilor Steve Crowley. City Councilors, school committee members, anyone I'm missing? Okay, great. Thank you all for being here. Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, my message is a simple one. We in Beverly embrace, include, love, welcome everybody in our community. And, and I'm just so appreciative and grateful that everybody's here today. Um, we also know that that same love and embrace doesn't extend everywhere. And we know there are places in this country where people are trying to take away rights and do harm to people. And so we all recognize that that's something we have to face and fight against and work on every day of the year. Um, and with that said, we're here today to celebrate. So let me just turn it back to Jocelyn and make sure that we all have a great time. I'm really looking forward to getting that flag up there in, in another couple minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Cahill. I also want to take a moment to recognize the members of the Human Rights Committee who helped bring, who brought this uh, event to us today. Could you raise your hand if you are on the Human Rights Committee? Yeah, give them a round of applause, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Julie Flowers, City Council President and Minister of the First Baptist Church. Uh, thank you, Jocelyn, for your introduction. And thank you, everyone, for allowing me just a couple minutes to speak. Um, it's such a celebration and such a joy to see this amazing turnout here. I think give yourselves a round of applause. Look around at this turnout. Earlier today, members of the Human Rights Committee and another thank you to them for their work asked me how I want to be introduced. And I always think people ask me that because it's impossible to know, am I here as a counselor? Am I here for my day job as a a faith community in Beverly that is welcoming and affirming. And the truth is it's really hard to parse those out because I'm, I'm here as both, because I'm here as me. Um, and so I'm just so happy to be here with you. And I was thinking about a song that we sometimes sing in my day job. I will not sing for you because I'm not a good singer, but I will tell you that some of the lyrics to the chorus of this song talk about the rejoicing that happens when we work together to be creators of justice and joy. 
And I thought that really is the message that we're gathered here today about because this really is a celebration of joy. Looking around, looking at the faces and the flags and the celebration of people being embraced for who they are created to be. And that's a joy. And yet this is a reminder to us that this is an unending call to work for justice and that in people's lives, there is the right to expect and to deserve both. And so that to me is what we're celebrating today, that our community is committed to working for justice unendingly and to celebrating all of the amazing people who call this community home and especially today our LGBTQIA plus community here in Beverly. So thank you so much. It's a joy to be here with you. Thank you, Madam President. And now please welcome Mitchell Thomas, member of Beverly's Race Equity Task Force. Hello, everyone. Um, happy Pride. Um, it, I love Pride. It's, it's kind of the kickoff of summer. See everyone in shorts. The weather might cooperate. It might not. Um, but it, it, it is. It's a celebration. It is a time to celebrate love and diversity and community. Um, but I also always remember that Pride started out as a protest. And one of the things that this... Oh, one of the things that has come up in a number of conversations this year for me is how many more kind of corporate sponsors there are for Pride, which is absolutely wonderful to see. I think in on my Roku, the uh, Paramount Plus app has a little rainbow and it was like, oh, that's a, that is an unexpected little touch, um, a, a, a choice that was made through committees. And what came to mind for me is what are they doing for the LGBTQ community? And so as you see all of the, the sponsors, the companies that are, that are marching, that are sort of putting out their rainbows in June, make sure that as a consumer, as an employee, that we're really thinking and ensuring that they're holding on to that, um, that commitment to the LGBTQ community year round, that it's not just something in June that we do, but that we're always thinking about the impact, the positive impact that we could be having um, for our LGBTQ community, um, particularly for our trans members. Um, and the other thing I want to say as far as kind of accountability is that another important thing to do is to vote. Uh, there are elections coming up and so the primary elections for Massachusetts are on September 8th and November 6th for the general election. So make sure that you are registered to vote and that you are active and engaged because that is the other way that we hold our government um, our elected government officials accountable to ensuring LGBTQ equality year round. Thank you, Mitchell. And now please welcome Dr. Andre Morgan, Beverly Public Schools Director of Opportunity, Access and Equity. Well, good afternoon. On behalf of uh, Dr. Sue Chirochek, our superintendent of schools in her absence, to Dr. Dot Flaherty, our assistant superintendent, our principals, Mrs. Megan Hart, Mrs. Aaron Sweeney, and Mrs. Gabrielle Montavecchi, our teachers, students, families, and to each of you, Beverly Public Schools is excited to be a part of this celebration. So I'd like to start by doing a dramatic reading of Dr. Seuss's Green Eggs and Ham. <laughs> I could not, would not on a boat. I will not, will not with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them on a train. Not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. In the book, the character Sam I Am attempts to convince his comrade to try the green eggs and ham, and in various configurations, in a boat, with a goat, in a box, with a fox, and so on. And no matter what the arrangement is, the green eggs and ham were different. And I'm learning in the work of advocating for difference that there's something about the concept and idea of differences 
that makes people unaccepting and uncomfortable. This year, we marked the 53rd anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, where people protested over the differences in people's experiences and in their beliefs. And the tremendous progress that has been made as a society is thanks to many of you who experienced that time and you stood up and you continue to stand up today for the rights of others. These actions are necessary because they really create a more warming community and they make this community in particular a more just and compassionate place. So we've come a long way, but the reality is we still have a long way to go. A long way to go to defend the progress that has been made. And so we have to keep reaching out to LGBTQ Americans who are vulnerable and alone and who need our support, whether it's teenagers in rough situations, to our senior adults who are struggling to find housing and care. Dr. Martin Luther King said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And that means that we can shape our communities to extend beyond our own particular interest. We have to ensure, just like Sam I Am did in the book, that we're reaching out to others no matter what their response. I'm excited today to be joined by two of our students from Beverly Public Schools. Hollis Kobe, a rising senior at Beverly High School, and Braden Willenbrock, a rising sophomore at Beverly High School. And both of these students will share their perspectives on what we can all do, no matter what our background, no matter what our experience is, to make our communities and our schools more inclusive of people with differences. We thank you, Hollis. Hello, everyone. It's nice to be back. Um, I spoke here last year, and some of you may recognize me. Um, I'm Hollis Colby, and I'm a queer non-binary student at BHS. And I was asked to speak on behalf of queer students here at BHS. And when I was first asked this, I honestly had quite a wave of anxiety, because I wouldn't know how it would be possible for me to explain how you know everyone feels when it's just me, one person. And I realized that I honestly cannot. I can't explain everything from everyone's perspective because a big part of being queer is it's such a unique experience and it's so personal to everyone. And to some it's freeing, to some a burden, or some it's just something they've always known. There's no one way to be queer and there's no one way to come out. There's no one way to be your true self and that should be celebrated. Being queer is a journey, and it is something that is so beautiful and something I always be proud of. I stand here today with the help of my family and my friends who never denied me the chance to be authentically me. And for those who can't come out, no matter the reason, you are loved and you are celebrated, and that's what pride is for. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brayden Willenbrock. Um, I am a rising sophomore at BHS. Um, I moved to Beverly almost four years ago. I was this nervous sixth grader who had undergone living in Loveland, Colorado. I remember coming out and being so scared of receiving retorts similar to those in Colorado, but I didn't. For the most part, because there's always room for growth, I was treated with respect and built close relationships with my peers, regardless of my sexuality. I always felt welcomed and loved, and that has made a long-lasting impact on me and my confidence in my sexuality and as my person as a whole. That same year, I was searching for some sort of LGBTQ support group, and I couldn't find one. Since I was one of the first groups to go to Beverly Middle School, there weren't many clubs and um, that had been started, and I thought it would be a good idea to ask to start a GSA. Now, since that Beverly Middle School has such a supportive community, it was luckily to, uh, it was easy to find a, uh, an advisor and a couple of students to join, and the Beverly Middle School GSA was born. It's still up and running today, and I'm so glad that there's a place where queer youth are able to support and learn from each other's experiences. Last year, Beverly had its first ever pride raising ceremony. It was a very pivotal moment in Beverly's history, and it was one of the first moments where Beverly had a major event where they explicitly supported the LGBTQ community. 
I feel as though in the past four years I've been in Beverly, I've seen immense progress from flag raisings to marches to uh, support groups and everything in between. Now, like I said, there's always room for growth, but in the direction that we're going, growth is inevitable, and I'm excited to see the Beverly that emerges from this change. Thank you. Thank you, Brayden. Thank you, Hollis. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Yeah. Now, please welcome Mindy DiPolito, Human Rights Committee member, to the podium. Thank you. I have a helper. Why don't you stand here? So I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, it's great to hear all of these amazing speakers from the highest levels of city government to our school district to um, community members and particularly the youth who spoke. So thanks everybody for um, being here. I am one of several members of the Human Rights Committee here today. I'm looking for Kasia Johnson, our chair. Oh, there she is. Hi. Just shouting out to her. Um, you know, we're here to support events like these and to really make sure that we hear and amplify everyone's voice in Beverly. Um, and thank you. And um, so, you know, it's, it's really wonderful to hear about the resources that have been started by youth in the schools. Um, I want to draw everybody's attention to the table, um, Lane Billings table, to learn about a newly formed LGBTQ plus network um, in Beverly. I can't see the table, but it's back there somewhere. And then right now, we'd like to um, kind of open the floor to anybody who wants to share a couple of words about what pride means to them. Um, we're going to start by asking Amy Hutton and Camille Crawford to share. But after they share, we have time for um, a couple of people. If you want to share um, a few words, uh, we would love to hear from you. Hello. Um, firstly, thank you to our organizers, past and present. Um, <laughs> here with my wife and our daughters today, not just to kick off Pride Month, but to really be present in this moment with our community here in Beverly. Events like this are so important for our LGBTQ plus and ally community to be seen, to show our pride. And so folks can know that no matter who we are, who you are, you are enough. Continue to be you, to do what you do, to love what you do, to be yourselves, and most importantly, to love and support each other. Have a safe and happy pride. Our existence is truly a reason to celebrate. Thanks. Asher would love to give somebody else the mic, if anybody wants to share. really happy that we're able to have this representation in our country and in the world. Happy Pride Month! Thank you. Behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So there's all these elders. One's up there, there's a veteran's face. Something was turned on. So 